Remember, this is a direct consequence of the work that we asked the FATF to do in assessing us so that we could improve the product in Gibraltar. It has a consequence that those countries like the United Kingdom, for example, that mirror the FATF list automatically have to put us on the watch list. And this is what's happened with the European Union. They automatically mirror the FATF list. The review date for the FATF falls in May. So we're doing everything possible, leaving no stone unturned. So at the first possible review, which is May, we've done everything necessary to be brought off the FATF's grey list. And then the natural consequence is that you fall off the lists that automatically adopt the FATF list. Whether it's automatic or not, the fact is that we are on another watch list. What effect do you think this will have on the finance centre? Well, look, the reality is that we're only going to improve by subjecting ourselves to organisations like the FATF, understanding the assessment that they make of us, correcting the things that they've identified we have to correct. And of course, in that interim, this is a growing pain. This is not going to be easy for people in the finance center. We appreciate that. We've done everything possible with the finance center in partnership with the government, not to be put on the gray list by the FATF. We are the jurisdiction with the least items outstanding that has been put on a gray list. And of course, we have to work together to come off that gray list as soon as possible so that we go where we deserve to be, where we should be from the beginning, which is the white list of the FATF and consequently every other list that is based on the FATF list. Could there be a danger of overcompensating from here to May and overfining? Well, look, that's a law enforcement question. It's not a question for the politicians. It's not a question for the uh, political executive. But I'm very confident that the way that Gibraltar enforces its rules is fair and is proportionate and would not for one moment be done on the basis of those who do not deserve to go through a law enforcement process, being put through a law enforcement process, simply for the purposes of us being able to show compliance with the law enforcement tick in the box. That's not the way it works. Okay, let me ask you a political question then. The FATF happened in June. It's been announced now. Can we read any political implications into the timing? No, there are no political implications of the timing. The lists are redone at particular times of the year, annually. The UK does an annual list, which came a few months after the FATF list. The EU does an end of year list. So this is not something that is being done on the basis of being uh, subjected to pressure in the process of negotiation. I disassociate those two. The issue was raised with us in the context of the negotiations so that we understood that it was exactly the opposite of that and it was a direct and automatic consequence which will be just as directly and automatically proven in our favor when we come off the FATF list as we deserve to, to do. That was going to be my last question, Chief Minister. How confident are you that we will be taken off the grey list? Well, look, uh, this all is not objective. It is subjective to an extent, and therefore it is impossible to say that we will come off the list. It is impossible to say that something will happen, especially if it depends on a third party's subjective assessment. But I'm sure that we will do everything we have to do to ensure that we've dealt with the outstanding points in order that a fair assessment, and I'm sure it will be a fair assessment, will determine that we should come off the FATF list.